Okay, so I get a lot of questions about how to do natural ventilation. And there's a number of ways that you can approach natural ventilation. Um, but uh, we will focus on one of them in this episode. And that is to add a natural ventilation object to your windows on the building. And that object is called uh, Zone Ventilation Wind and Stack Open Area. And this is a download that you can get from the Building Component Library. So if we go to the BCL and we search for stack, here it is. It's called Add Wind and Stack Open Area and you can download this measure and put it into your My Measures directory as I discuss in some of my other videos. Unfortunately, this version in the Building Component Library at the moment is an older version and it is not compatible with the most recent version of Open Studio. So, what we can do is we can go to GitHub and if you search for building performance simulation, um, their, one of their repositories, Open Studio Measures, has, um, they're, they're updating all of the, or many, many of the Energy Plus measures to be Open Studio Measures. So if we can, we can go into their uh, library measures and then add wind and stack open area here. And you would have to download all of these folders and files and place them inside your My Measures folder, um, as I discussed in my previous video. But you can go to uh, the Measures tab and, and easily open up your My Measures folder with this button down here. And uh, that's, so that's where you would place the, um, the downloaded mesh, the, uh, these downloaded files. You would place them in um, their own folder called Add Wind and Stack Open Area. And that way you can access those through Open Studio. So, what does this wind and stack open area measure do? Um, it is based on some ASHRAE research, and um, it is based on a typical door um, or a, a casement type window um, that, that swings outward and um, is, um, it, it has an opening area from the very bottom of the window to the very top of the window or um, from the very bottom of the door to the very top of the door. So if we look at um, <coughs> casement windows, And um, I'm trying to find a good example. So a casement window is, is, is pretty much um, like a door. And um, it, it opens very much like a door. And um, so we can just take a look at, at this one right here. Um, just do a snipping tool. And we'll just do this. So we can draw on this. And what, so what does this add wind and stack area measure do? So um, it looks at two different um, calculations um, from ASHRAE fundamentals. Um, there is a, uh, 
a wind component and it uses this equation here. It's based on open area, um, the effectiveness um, based on the angle of the window to the wind and um, the, uh, the actual open fraction of the window and the wind speed. So that's the wind component of the equation. And then the other component of the equation is a stack effect, which is this equation here. And that is based on um, a temperature difference uh, between the outside, outside air and the zone temperature. Um, it's based on a height difference between the neutral pressure level um, and then an open area fraction. So how, how open is the window? And then the actual window opening area. And there's a, a discharge coefficient of the opening. Um, so what is this, what is the stack effect doing? Well, it's, it's modeling um, a stack effect. Basically, when you open the window, there is a, there's a neutral pressure level here, somewhere in the mid middle point of the window. Um, and what is happening is air is getting sucked in at the bottom, the bottom portion, and air is discharging out the top portion of the window. And so that's what that measure is doing. It's combining those two effects. It's combining the stack effect and the wind effect um, as a quadrature sum. And it's calculating a, 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 a ventilation value for that, that room. So um, let's take a look at our model. We have a typical, um, this typical building, this was generated with a a Department of Energy prototype. So this is a Department of Energy prototype for a typical standalone office building. And it's got a number of, of windows um, and, and, and doors located around the building. So all of these windows on this model are, are called fixed windows. So the first thing to note with this measure is that we have to, we have to change these windows to operable windows. So you can go to Spaces tab and go to Subsurfaces and we can search by subsurface type and we can look for fixed windows. So we want to change all of these to an operable window type. So we'll change that one and then we'll apply to Selected. So that changes all of our windows in the building to operable windows. And you, you can only, you can change whatever windows you want. Um, but for this example, we're just going to assume that all the windows in the building are operable windows. And we'll click save. And then the next step is to go to the measures tab. And the measure that we're looking for is located under Library, Envelope, Fenestration. And we will select the My Measures one. As I said, the older building component measure is outdated and it doesn't work with the latest version of Open Studio. So we will do this one that we downloaded from GitHub. We will drop it into the Open Studio Measures folder. And then we can click on it to edit the input variables. So it gives you a number of options. Um, this one is add, it, it adds this wind and stack area object to all operable windows. Or you can select the type of window that you want it to be applied to if you have multiple different windows in your project. But for now, we'll just apply it to all the windows. 
Um, the next component is open area fraction schedule. And it says a typical operable window does not open fully. The actual opening area in a zone is a product of the area of operable windows and the open area fraction schedule. So it says it defaults to 50%. So what is that saying? Well, it's saying that um, the window is is only open only open up by 50%. Um, and this is just a default open fraction schedule. Um, if we wanted to adjust that opening, um, we can create a fractional schedule. So you would just go to schedules, schedules, and then add a schedule, and then go to fractional, click apply, and say we wanted the window to be open 75%. So we would hover over it and type 0.75. And that would be the window opening area. And we could just call this um, nat natural vent window fraction. Schedule and say um, maybe uh, no maybe the window is closed um, at night times so we can double click and say at night time it's at zero so the windows are always closed at night um, they are only open during the day and when they are opened um, they're opened up to seventy five percent. Uh, opening and we could say that the people go home around four o'clock and close the windows before they leave and there's our open area fraction schedule so this is this is the first part of it um, so we can go back to the measures tab select the measure and then select our custom fraction schedule, which is this one here that we just created, natural vent window fraction schedule. And then there's a bunch of other parameters that we can input. Uh, minimum indoor temperature. So this is the indoor temperature below which the ventilation is shut off. So even though we have this fraction schedule, um, if the temperature is, the indoor temperature is below this value, the occupants will not open the windows. Um, alternatively, you can specify a custom temperature schedule if that um, if preferences vary throughout the day. So you could create a custom schedule. So for instance, the occupants um, would never open the windows uh, in the mornings unless um, the indoor temperature was a certain value, but they might open it in the afternoons if the indoor temperature was a certain value. So you can you can create a temperature schedule for that. Moving on, um, there's a maximum indoor temperature uh, above which the ventilation is shut off. So if the temperature inside the room gets above this value, the occupants will always close the windows. Um, and likewise, you can create a custom schedule for that. So um, maybe it would be above a certain value in the mornings, but maybe above a different value in the afternoons. So you could create that custom schedule. Um, the next one is maximum indoor-outdoor temperature difference. And this is the temperature difference below which the ventilation is shut off. So three degrees is quite small. Um, you won't get much natural ventilation below three degree temperature difference. Uh, so it's pointless to actually open those windows um, if there is a temperature difference below three degrees. Um, because based on the stack effect, um, that 
uh, ventilation is driven by temperature difference. And so the higher temperature difference between the indoors and the outdoors, the more natural ventilation you're going to have. And below a certain value, it, uh, it is not effective and it is not necessary to open those windows for ventilation. You can also assign a custom schedule. So if um, that temperature difference varies throughout the day or um, varies based on the season, um, you could assign that value. So all of these values pretty much have uh, you know, a constant number, or you can assign a, you know, a, a, a varying schedule um, to those throughout the year. The next one is minimum outdoor temperature. So this is the outdoor temperature below which the ventilation is shut off. So if the outdoor temperature gets too cold, the occupants will close the windows. Same thing with this, you can create a custom schedule. The next one is maximum outdoor temperature. This is the outdoor temperature above which the ventilation is shut off. So again, if the ventilation, if the outdoor temperature outside gets too high, the occupants might close the windows at that value. And then finally, the last component is the maximum wind speed in meters per second. Um, and above this wind speed, the windows are shut. So if it gets too windy outside, the occupants will close those windows. So we can go ahead and run the measure. We'll go to the Run Simulation tab and click Run. So the simulation was run successfully. And um, we can look at the Open Studio results for this. And uh, you will see that, um, well, we don't have anything to compare it to. So what we could do is um, we could save this as a model version two, and we can run the simulation without the measure. We'll just delete the measure and click run. And the model was run successfully and we can go to the open studio results for that one as well. Um, let us open up the previous one with the wind and stack area natural ventilation on the windows. And we can compare the two. So this is the one with the natural ventilation, and this is the one without the natural ventilation. So you can see that our site EUI without the natural ventilation is 33.26, and with the natural ventilation is 33.04. So you can see that the natural ventilation has reduced our energy use intensity, and we can look at the, let me see, end use table and make a comparison to what, what savings we're, we are realizing. So heating without the natural ventilation is 14,350. Heating with the ventilation is 14,549. So you can see that our heating went up a little bit with the windows being opened and closed. But you can see that with cooling, um, without the window, natural ventilation is 12,540. 
But with the natural ventilation, it got reduced to about 11,100. So you can see that our cooling load um, went down. Our heating load went up slightly, but uh, there is a net savings from that natural ventilation. So, of course, this measure is um, based on climate zones. So some climate zones are more, um, uh, they're better for the application of natural ventilation and other climate zones are worse for natural ventilation. So it will be highly dependent on what climate zone your building is located in. This climate zone that we're looking at, it looks to be ASHRAE Climate Zone 5B. Um, and this is in Oregon. Let's see, what else can we say about these windows? Um, so, as discussed, these windows are, 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 or this natural ventilation measure is based on the window um, geometry, and in particular, the window area, and also the difference in the height, um, because it's a natural ventilation stack effect, there's a, there's a difference in height um, that is caused, that's driving that, that stack effect. So what can we do to increase the natural ventilation of this, um, of this model? Well, uh, we could increase the window height for sure. Um, and uh, so let's go ahead and just do that. Um, we'll open up SketchUp. And we'll open up the model with the natural ventilation uh, measure that we had placed in it. And we will save this as a version 3 with the modified windows. So as discussed, this ventilation component is based on window area and window height. So if we increased the window height on all of these, we could increase the natural ventilation of the windows. Now, the downside to this, of course, is that we're increasing the window area and by doing that, um, we are reducing the insulative value of the wall, and we are also allowing a lot more sunlight into the building, which will actually increase our cooling load. So it will be interesting to find out if by doing this, we actually find a savings or if it actually increases our energy use intensity of the building. So we'll click save. And we can open the Open Studio model by launching Open Studio. And then we can run the model. And the model was run successfully. And if we look at the results with the larger windows, 
we can say see that our energy use intensity actually increased in comparison to the model that did not have natural ventilation. So you can see that there is a, a balancing act that you have to do um, based on the windows, um, their orientation to the sun, and their orientation to prevailing winds, and um, a lot of other variables such as when the occupants open and close those windows, when the natural ventilation is allowed to be operable, you know, what seasons it's allowed to operate and whatnot. So that is it in a nutshell. That is how you add a wind and stack object to your windows so that you can calculate a natural ventilation rate to those rooms. One last thing that we should note is that um, this, this measure is only based on the windows. So um, I will just take a snapshot of this here. And so this measure is, is driven only by the windows. And so that natural ventilation for each of these windows is only active for those rooms that these windows are applied to. And it's, it's calculating the airflow that goes into and comes out of that window that's associated with you know, that room on the building. And so each one of these windows is, is calculating a natural ventilation rate but it is not taking into account the height of the building. So, for example, if we had like a, a you know a roof vent up here, um, it's it's not calculating the temperature difference stack effect of a window taking in air and exhausting out of the top of the building. It's only accounting for that height difference of the window itself. So that's how you do that. I think that's good for today. Thank you. Please like and subscribe.